Hi, this is Kate from Spinoff. I love portable projects that can move with me out in the world. Just like my spindles or book charka, a small rigid heddle used backstrap style to weave narrow bands can be used just about anywhere. Today I'm weaving in my greenhouse on a very cool spring morning. I'm sitting in a chair, but you can also stand or sit on the ground to weave in this method. You just need to tie the far end of the warp to something secure and the near end of the warp to your belt. Plain weave bands are super easy to learn to warp and weave, and I'll show you the basics here. Pickup bands look much more complicated, but after learning how to warp and weave plain weave bands, pickup only requires a few more skills. This type of traditional band weaving is just so much fun and it only takes a little time, a small amount of yarn, and a few tools to get started. I've gathered all of the tools that I need to warp and weave a narrow band. I'm going to be weaving a very short band because my goal here is to just show you how quickly you can warp, weave, and enjoy a narrow band. And just putting small amounts of yarn on a loom is just a delight. So I am starting with uh, hand spun yarn. You can use mill spun yarns. Anything with a fairly tight twist is helpful because it helps stand up to abrasion. This is a chain plate yarn I spun from a painted braid, which gives me this fun color pooling. I have in the center of it all the rigid heddle. This rigid heddle is from the Dancing Goats, and Robin specializes in reproduction tools and tools inspired by ancient tools uh, that have been found in archaeological sites and things like that. This is based on a rigid heddle that was found in France from the Roman era. The original was in bronze, and this one is in holly. And you can see it's fairly narrow, it's very lightweight, which makes weaving really easy. And it's small enough to fit in your pocket. It's just a delight. <laughs> and also from the Dancing Goats, I have a shuttle. And I've been using this one a lot lately. It just fits just right in my hand as I'm weaving. It has a point on both ends, which makes it easy to pick up and use either way. And it also has this really nice beveled edge, which is what we're gonna use to beat the warp into place as we're weaving. So I'm quite keen on that one. And I have my warping pegs. I'm gonna use two different types of pegs so you can see how they work. This is the type of peg that often comes with uh, rigid heddle kits, rigid heddle loom kits, uh, and other types of small looms today. And you can also just use small, cheap clamps that you can pick up at the hardware store. Another traditional way of warping uh, this type of band is at a kitchen table, where you take the kitchen chairs and turn them upside down so the legs are up and warp between them. It's very traditional. It's about using what you have on hand and what is in your environment. I'm gonna be using two popsicle sticks to um, find the warp cross. And you can use pens, you could use pieces of cardboard, lots of things will work. Sharp scissors and a needle for weaving in the weft at the end of the band. And that is all you need to get started. So let's put on a warp. I've moved all of the tools I don't need out of the frame, and now I'm going to begin warping. I've wound my yarn into balls, and I am going to start with a loop on this end. Then I drop over my first peg. And now I am simply going to wind a figure eight of 13 threads. So there's two, three, four,
When I get to the end, I'm going to cut the yarn, tie a loop that will go over this peg. Find the cross. It's a little of my yarn. To secure it for the moment. Take my scrap yarn off and I'm ready for threading. Now I'm ready to thread the heddle. So I need my heddle, my warp, and I'm also going to add in an optional tool, which is a very small crochet hook. And that helps me thread, especially those tight holes. And so I am going to lay my warp out like this. If you have a very large warp, long warp, you could tie this in multiple places or put a book over this to hold it down. And I'm gonna take off my first thread, which was secured by the weaver's cross, and start in the farthest hole or slot. In this case, it's a hole. Pull that through can help to separate these a little bit back here. Find the next thread. And keep going. all warped. Now I'm going to gather these ends into two small knots, lining up the ends. and we're warped. I now have my heddle ready to go and one end of my warp is attached to my windowsill.
And the other end I'm going to attach to my waist and I have a ribbon around my waist. There are fancy tools to attach this, um, usually called a band lock, but this is all that you need to do to get started. I really like, here we go, um, putting in a few picks of scrap yarn to get started. This gets the warp organized and the scrap yarn comes out at the end. So it's just for keeping things tidy right now. All right. And there it is. I'm gonna trim those off so they're out of my way. I'm ready to pass my weft now through the shed. I'm gonna leave a tail. Now I'm going to go up. Pass this new one through. Getting started is the fussiest bit. So both ends are in the same shed. Okay, now I go down, pass through, and I like to pull this down and then pinch the edge and pull through. Now I'm gonna go up. and pass through. I was up, that would have unwoven that pick. So now I'm gonna go down, pull, pass through. That's all there is to it, up and down. And then I keep weaving. I'll give you a closer look now at how the band is coming along. I'm quite happy with it. And along the side, you'll see a little row of dots. And that is the only place that the weft will show up on a warp faced band. It's super fun to work into the design and there are just endless opportunities to play with quick, short warps. Happy band weaving.